Okay, so this video is for our first actual lab, which is lab 11A, algorithm coding with user input. If you go ahead and open that, um, there are three steps to this lab. And the first step is simply to create an algorithm using pseudocode. The second step and the third step um, will be actual programs. Um, and so step A and step B both relate to the same program. Um, it asks us to write an algorithm using pseudocode to calculate the volume of a box. The algorithm, or the program, will ask the user for the height, the width, and the depth of the box. It will make a calculation of the volume, and then it will output the result. And we're going to put the algorithm into the online editor. So if you go to add submission, so just a quick reminder, the purpose of an algorithm is simply to set out the steps that the program are going to be completing. And so if you remember what I said about pseudocode in last week's lesson, we said that keywords like start, input, output, calculate are going to be capitalized. Everything else can be in lowercase. So we'll start off as always with start program. And then we know that we have to output three different messages. And so we're going to use the output keyword and we're simply going to put the text which is going to be displayed. So enter height or box, and you can do this in any order, um, output. Enter width of box and then Is no actual programming code. Like I said before, pseudocode is just designed to look like programming language. Um, and so we've now had our three outputs. And our next step is that we want to calculate the volume of the box. And the way that we do that is simply by multiplying height by width by depth. So that's what we're going to do. Lowercase height. Obviously, that's not the end of the program because it has to output the information that we've created here. So although we've done the calculation, we haven't displayed it in any way. So we're going to have our final output and the output is simply going to be the box volume. Um, and then we're going to stop the program. Okay, so that is our algorithm using pseudocode which is designed to take us through step by step exactly what the program is going to accomplish. Um, you can go ahead and click Save Changes or you can leave it open. But for the second step, for step B, you're going to be basically turning this algorithm, translating it into a Python program. So we're going to go into Idle. Remember, you can't do this in the shell window. You need to be in this window. Um, and I'm going to take you through this program. And then the idea is that once you've done step B and you've uploaded it, um, you should be fairly, fairly comfortable with having a go at doing step C, which is creating a program which is going to ask the user for a temperature in Fahrenheit, and it's going to convert it to Celsius. So anyway, let's stick with step B for now. Let's create the, let's create the code in order to set up this program. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is look at really the first step, output the ent enter the height of the box. And so there's a couple of things to bear in mind here. If you have done the pre, well, if you have read through the presentation, you will be familiar with the con with the um, with the idea of variables. Um, a variable is basically a place to store data for a temporary amount of time within the program. Um, and the way that we assign um, a variable is simply by naming it, by using the equal sign as the assignment operator, and then by providing a value. And that value may be hard-coded in by the programmer, but more likely it's going to be provided by the user. And that's what we're doing here. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is add in a couple of comments. Um, and a comment is always 
indicated by a hashtag in Python. Um, and the purpose of a comment, it's not going to be um, executed at runtime, it's simply there to provide information um, to people, either yourself or other people reading the code. Um, and so at the beginning, I'm going to provide information about the program. So for example, um, I'm going to say box volume calculator, that's the sort of uh, the name of the program or purpose of the program. I'm also going to include the author information. So author, let's just put, or you can just put your name, don't put your name, put your name. And let's just have the date of creation, which is the 16th of, let's have the date published. 16th March, 2020. And in front of me, just put in label program name. Okay, so we've got the program name, we've got the author, we've got the date of publication. You could add in additional information about specifically what the program does and whether there's any copyright restrictions. But for now, this is good enough. Um, and so this is really documentation comments. Um, but we can also include comments throughout our program, and that is what we're going to do. So I'm going to go down a few steps, and I'm just going to add a comment to basically explain what's happening at each step in this program. And so the first step is that we're going to be what's known as initializing variables to hold values. Okay, that's a very sort of simplistic form, but that's essentially what we're doing. And so we're going to set up our first variable. And our first variable, I'm going to give it the descriptive name of width. This is the location where we are going to store whatever value the user types in as the width of the box. And so we have variable name, we have the assignment operator, the equal sign. And what we're going to do next is include another function. And this function is called the input function. It allows us to ask the user to input a value. And so after the input function, we're going to have our opening parameter, and then we're going to ask the user what we want. So we're simply going to say, like we did in the, um, like we did in the pseudocode, enter the height of the box. colon, space, close your quotation mark, close your brackets. Okay, so this is the pseudocode output and height of box. This is the actual code. So the variable name equals input enter height of the box. And at the moment, if we were to run this, well, first of all, it will ask you, do you want to save it? And you're going to give it a suitable name save it to the desktop or wherever you're saving your files. Um, and we're going to call this one volume and then the dot pi will be added automatically. Okay, so you don't need to type that in. Just click on save. Okay, and so this is what you see at the moment. If you try to type something in and press enter, obviously nothing's going to happen because we haven't finished the program. Um, but that's the purpose of the input function. It provides the user the opportunity to enter a value. Um, and so just before we go on, there's one last thing that I'm going to show you how to do. Um, at the moment, I haven't specified um, the data type that I want returned, um, but we want either a float or an integer returned. And I'm going to set it so that we convert the actual output and so when we use the input statement, what you're going to get back, whatever you're asking for, whether you're asking for a number or something else, what's going to be returned automatically by default is a string. And in this case, we do not want a string because we want to be able to do a calculation with these values. And so what we're going to do is convert the return value into a decimal number. Equally, you could do a whole number. It doesn't really matter, but obviously with decimals, you have a greater degree of precision. So by typing in float in front of this input statement, we're going to convert the default string data type 
into a float data type. And then what you can also see is that I've added a second opening parameter, which means I also need to add a second closing parameter. Okay, so you should always have equal numbers of opening and closing parameters. Um, and then we're also going to add or add a second comment and uh, convert default data type of string to float data type. Okay, so like I said, if you use inputs, even if you're asking for a number, automatically it returns a string. And so we want to convert that into a float. Okay, we're now going to do the same with the depth of the box. And don't copy and paste, do type it out. You're much more likely to remember it. Um, and then finally, we're going to do the same with the height of the box. So each time we're converting these numbers, or these strings, I suppose, into numbers. They have to be numbers if we want to do a calculation with them. Okay, if you have any issues, if, for example, you use a single quotation mark and a double quotation mark to open it, um, you will see that these no longer are turning black. You have to be consistent in your use of quotation marks. So your string should be in green, bracket should be in black, your float and your input function should be in purple, and your variable names, width, depth, and height should be in black as well. Okay, so pay attention because color coding um, will tell you whether you are on the right track or not. Okay, so if we go back to our algorithm, we can see that we've done these first three outputs. And our next step is to do a calculation. We're going to be calculating the box volume. And obviously, we want to have this value stored somewhere. So we're going to initialize a fourth variable, and we're going to call it volume. And you'll notice that all my variable names are in lowercase. Um, it just makes life easier. So just do that. Um, you can use capital letters, unfortunately. Um, but what happens is that when you call the variable, um, if you always use lowercase and it's easy to remember, you just call it in lowercase. But if you use a mixture of capital letters and lowercase, um, it makes it a lot more difficult um, to remember how you, how you set it up. So my general guideline is always use lowercase for your variable names. Okay, so variable name volume, assignment operator. This time, we do not need to convert this to any particular data type because it's already going to be um, a float data type. Okay, we're not using the input function. We're simply going to do the calculation. And the calculation is going to be calling the width variable Okay, and to call the variable, we simply type the name. So width times height times depth. Okay, and so we now know what the volume of the box is going to be. But at this point, we haven't output anything. Let me just add in another comment. Create volume variable to hold results of the calculation. Okay, and then let's go down here. And spacing doesn't really matter to some extent between these um, different lines. It's just whatever helps to make it easy to read for you. Um, output the volume of the box. Okay, so this is the final step before the program ends, output box volume. And so you will know by now that we're going to use a print statement, lowercase, and we're going to provide two arguments, just like we did in the previous sort of demonstration. So our first argument is going to be a string, and it's going to say the volume of the box is, space, the quotation marks, um, and then remember we separate these arguments with commas, um, and then we're simply going to call the volume variable. Okay, so we know that this variable the volume variable contains the results of this calculation. And so what we're going to see when we run this is that it will output, well, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go to run and run module. 
and save. Okay, so it's asking me to enter the height of the box. I'm going to put in 34. Do not press space before you type in the number. You will get an error if you do. So I'm going to type in 34. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to type in a random number for the depth. And then, and it doesn't matter what number you type in, um, type in a number for height and then press enter. And then you can see it's giving me the output statement. The volume of the box is, and obviously it's quite large. Okay, so we can then close this shell window. If you have got any syntax errors, if things aren't working, check again against what I have here and make sure that it is um, exactly the same. You're going to upload this file and then you're going to have a go at doing step C, okay, which is similar premise, um, but in this case, you're creating a program which converts between um, Fahrenheit and Celsius. You will need to create variables to hold the temperature in Fahrenheit, and you will need to use the input statement in this first step, um, and you will need to create a variable to hold the temperature in Celsius. You don't need to do um, an algorithm for it, just create it in a new file, in a new document, and save it as FahrenheitConverter.py. Okay, after you've done this, go on to step C and see how you get on.